Hello everyone, my name is David A. Cox, and today I'm going to be teaching for all of you a free new to Windows 7 class. Now what we did is we went through and chatted with a bunch of our clients who had gotten PCs with Windows 7 on it, who upgraded you know, from Vista, who upgraded from XP, and we asked all of them to make a list of all the items that confused them when they first switched over to Windows 7. The other reason why we wanted to do this is if you've seen some of our other videos, you're probably aware that we recently did a review of Windows 8 and were less than thrilled with it. Windows 7 is a lot cleaner. It still has a few problems with it, but it's a hell of a lot better than 8. So what we're going to do is try to answer in one video, in one class for all of you, all the main questions most people have when going to Windows 7. So first of all, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, this is of course being put on by PCClassesOnline.com. A lot of you have probably discovered us thanks to the ABC show Shark Tank, which I'm not allowed to comment on other than that since it hasn't aired as of the date that we're recording this. And uh, so let's get in. Let's show you everything you need to know about Windows 7. So the first thing you're going to notice that's a little bit different is this thing at the bottom, which is called the taskbar. And the taskbar is really handy because you can create shortcuts to all the applications that you use the most. So whether it's Internet Explorer, Chrome, different photo programs that are out there, really whatever you want. And the way you create a shortcut and put it on the taskbar I'm going to show you right now. Now you'll notice that there is no more start button instead it's a start menu and we can go in here go into all programs now unlike Windows XP everything is now in one unified list and let's just say that I use solitaire a lot I like playing solitaire well what I can do is I can go here into games find solitaire there it is and all I have to do is right click on it now the process that I'm going to show you is called pinning. So just click right here where it says pin to taskbar. And as soon as you do that, you'll see there's a little icon down here at the bottom and you just click on it and voila, you're good to go. Now Windows 7 is a lot faster than some of the other operating systems out there like Vista and XP. Um, so it's uh, very everything seems to run pretty quickly. Now one of the big things we're going to cover at the very end of this video is there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet about different antivirus software programs and how they work and what are the best ones and we're going to put out there our recommendations for all of this stuff. So keep tuned. Stay tuned. Next we're going to be talking about something called jump lists. Okay, and this is really handy, it helps keep you organized. And when you're on the internet, a lot of us have certain websites that we we go to much more frequently than others. So for me personally, it would be Facebook, it would be YouTube, it would be Vimeo, those those kind of sites. And one of the nice things you can do is you can create a jump list with truly anything, but I'm gonna use Internet Explorer right now as the example. If I put my cursor on Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer, and I right click, I'm going to see a list of all of those websites that I have recently been on. I can see uh, different tasks that are running. And what's cool is you can create a pin list here as well. So let's use YouTube as an example. And let's say I go to YouTube a lot. You see the little pin icon right here? Well, if I click on that, it's going to put it up here in a separate category, and that's not going to move. So what happens is the more you use your computer, the more your computer is going to figure out what websites you go to the most frequently. And it's going to start to create them here. But if there's a few that maybe you don't go to quite as often, but you want to have really fast, easy access to it, you can get to it just by simply pinning it right up here. And to unpin it, you guessed it, all you have to do is click the pin icon again and it goes back into the regular list. So those are called jump lists. And they work with different things too. For example, this icon right here you're going to be using a lot. This is Windows Explorer. You'll notice that there is no more My Computer on the desktop. So Windows Explorer is one of the ways you can get to all of your stuff. So if I simply single click on it, it's going to open up. And this should look familiar to most of you. I can go in here to see my documents, in here to see my music, pictures, videos and one place that a lot of people seem to not be aware of 
is downloads. So anytime you download anything from the internet or from an email, this is where it's going to be going. You're going to click on Windows Explorer and go into downloads. Now it's just talking about jump lists. So let's say that there is one place that I go to uh, in Windows Explorer more often than others. I can simply right click and there you go. I can boom, jump into documents if I had any documents on this computer. Next I want to talk about is the Windows button because it is a little bit different now. Um, I like it because it's a lot cleaner. Um, it's very easy to work with. So to access all programs, all you have to do is just leave your cursor over here and you'll see the list appear. Okay, and you can go through here. Uh, unlike Windows XP, you know, there used to be, you'd have these lists that would go the whole length of the screen. Now instead of that, everything is here just in that one unified list. So it makes it a lot easier to organize. Let's go back. As I said, my computer is gone and it's been replaced with simply computer right here. So if you need to get into that, that uh, any of those drives, for example, you can just simply click on computer. And there you go. Other things I want to talk about here are the shutdown button here. Now some of you who use your computers might be using it for business and what's kind of nice is that you can change a lot of the preferences for these options here. I love that background by the way. So instead of maybe I don't uh, shut down my computer a lot but I'm constantly switching users. I'm going to show you how to change this button so it doesn't say shut down, but instead it says switch users. So if you didn't know where to go to to restart and all of those other options such as log out, switch users, it's this button right next to it. So you can see I can switch users, log off, lock the computer, restart it, sleep, or hibernate. Quick uh, fun fact, a lot of people uh, ask us this question is at the end of the day should I shut down my computer or should I simply put it to sleep? Um, well Mac users uh, sleep and hibernate they're, they're all the same thing. Uh, that's what we recommend. For PC users it's it is the same. It's uh, I would typically put it to sleep or hibernate it. Um, most computers these days, not all, but most computers are so energy efficient that if you use your computer every single day, which most people do, it is actually going to cost more in energy to shut the whole thing down and then boot it back up the next day than it is to simply put it to sleep or hibernate it in this case. One of the things you have here, let's see here, one of the things you have here is you have a user photo, which is this right up here. And what I can do is if I want to change it, I can make it a photo of me or anything for that matter, I can simply click on it. And you can see here, it's going to bring me into my user settings, and I can create a password for my account. I can change my picture, change my account name, change the account type. If I'm trying to, let's say you have kids and you want to give them, uh, you know, you don't want to make them an administrator, but you want to give them a basic user, you can do that. Okay. One feature that I found really nifty in Windows 7 was screen snapping. And what this is, is let's say I'm on the web and a lot of times I have to do more than one thing at a time as best as humans are capable of doing multitasking. And uh, let's say, for example, I want to have open CNN, okay, but I also want to be able to check my Facebook updates. Well, one of the little tricks that I can do is I can, oops, sorry about that, is I can drag this window and I can snap it to one side of the screen. So I can drag it to either the right or the left and I have it in half screen. So now I can open up another window and have that take up the other half. Now the easiest way to do this, I use a lot of hotkeys, is if you look at your keyboard, if you hit control and the letter N, N is in Nancy, that'll open a second window so now over here, I can go to, for example, facebook.com, snap it to the right-hand side of the screen, and as soon as that loads, I have Facebook on one side and I have CNN on the other. Likewise, with uh, screen snapping, is let's say I have my, 
browser window here and it's just kind of a little screen and I want to just immediately get it to be full screen well yes you can still traditionally click on the little box up here but the other thing you can do is you can just drag this and drop it at the top see how it kind of snap boom it's open full screen another thing you can do is let's say I have this is a little trick I don't know many people who honestly use this trick but I'm gonna show you anyway okay let's say I have a bunch of windows open okay I have Google Chrome I have solitaire I have Internet Explorer okay sometimes I want to uh, I just want to hide the rest of everything this is kind of an interesting little trick you can grab the top part here in any screen and just shake it back and forth and you see how it hides everything just a little trick and then I can shake it again oops and then sorry I'm sorry then I have to click back on these icons to bring them back let's see here next thing we can talk about are gadgets now gadgets had a major security loophole in them and unfortunately it led to a lot of Windows users getting viruses um, so they've pretty much discontinued them at this point other than the very very basic ones that come with Windows 7 but that being said they're not horrible the ones that come with it um, and so for example you see this little clock right here that I have there's also I have a little uh, a little weather gadget here and the way you get access to these is you're gonna right click on your screen and the second to the final option is gadgets so as you can see here there are not a lot of them and if you want to I'll show you what happens if you try to click here where it says get more gadgets online it takes you to Windows website where they basically say uh, they were unsafe they can cause harm to your computer so they have stopped supporting them so you can still get clock you can have a clock you can have a calendar CPU meter and these other ones that you see here let's say I want to add a calendar all I have to do is click it drag it and drop it right on my desktop and it will stay there and there's different little ways you can modify these so for example uh, with the clock you see this little wrench icon I can click on that and get access to different options including changing how the clock looks so if I want to go for like a neon feel which I don't I could put that there you have all these different options the other thing that's nice is let's say you're a business person and like for example I have to constantly talk to people in all different time zones one thing I'll do uh, that's very helpful is I'll have a bunch of these all with different time zones so I know okay in LA it's three hours earlier or is it later I don't remember that's why I use these widgets these gadgets rather for the calendar here you can see you can kinda have it show just the date like that or you can have it show kind of a layout whatever you want next I'm going to show you how to uh, very simply get access to the desktop and once again let's just kind of clutter the screen here right now real quick you have to give them credit it does load pretty quickly okay so I have all these screens everywhere and sometimes you want to just get to the desktop well it's very hard to see but if you look at the very very bottom right corner there's this kind of inconspicuous little bar if I just hover my cursor over it there you go I kind of see shadow images of all my windows but I can now fully see the desktop okay that's a little trick another thing you can do is you can personalize your desktop let's get out of all these and by this I mean you can change your desktop background you can even make it into a slideshow of your photos so let's show you how to do that you're gonna right click once again on the desktop anywhere and here the final option is personalize so you can see here that Windows 7 comes preloaded with a whole bunch of different themes for example I can go here into uh, architecture makes a little ding I can see the different backgrounds and it's gonna kind of slideshow through all of them characters that's just a little too weird for me landscapes this one's pretty that's one of my favorite nature scenes and then I like this one United States Woohoo! so you can go through any whichever ones you want and you can really make this a very personal experience so for example uh, if you want to change the sounds around you heard that I have some kind of a uh, 
interesting sounds when there's an alert of some sort. You can click here on sound and they have all these different sound schemes. That's what they're called, sound schemes. And you can pick between the ones that you like. And uh, so for example, let's say I want to hear what festival sounds like. I can click festival and let's say I want to hear what it's going to sound like. Oops, scroll down here when uh, I'm trying to exit a window. Hit test. It was very low, very hard for probably most of you here. So you can go through them and some of them are just weird and others are nice. So personally I settled on landscape. And hit apply when you're done and voila. The other thing you can do is you can always make your own. Uh, you can make your own theme. Um, and you can access other ones that you don't see here online. And to do that, you just simply click here where it says Get More Themes Online. Okay. Uh, and one of the things you'll notice here is you see at the top of my bar here how it's clear? I actually usually don't do that. You can change it so that it's different colors. I'm sorry, that's technically slate colored. My bad. So you can have it go, let's say you're kind of a blue person or a green person. It doesn't really work with that background. Pink. However you want. I'm a blue guy. Don't ask why. I'm just a blue guy. Save changes. The other thing you can do is you can add in your own photos. So to do that, uh, you can hit picture location and you can go into your pictures library. Okay, or if you have maybe a folder that's just devoted to photos that you really, really want, you can hit browse and just click on that particular folder. So I can go into pictures library, okay, these are not actually my photos, and check the ones that I want it to use as a background. And as you can see here, I have some options to change the picture every 30 minutes, How I can do 10 seconds. I would never do 10 seconds or even one minute. I try to encourage people to do five minutes. Uh, it just uses a little too much RAM, uh, too much memory for the computer to really uh, work well. And when you're done, just simply hit Save Changes. I'm going to go back to the one that I like. There we go. Oop, I scrolled through that too. Guys. Okay, Save Changes. Da da da. Next, let's see here. What do we have next? We over. We went over sound schemes. Uh, ah, here we go. One of the things I want to show you is I deal a lot, and with a lot of these classes as well, we appeal to a clientele that is typically over the age of 50. Now, depending on what size screen you have and your vision, different people have different needs as far as how big they really need their text to be. So I'm going to show you a way, a little trick to make all of the text bigger on the computer for those who need it. And it's amazing how many people don't know how to do this. So this might be something you might end up sharing with your friends. We're going to go actually right back to where we were. We're going to right click and go back into personalize. Okay. Now from here, we're going to go into display. And as you can see here, I already have it right here. Uh, 100% actually looks like this. Oh, it's going to make me log off. I'm not going to do that. But anyways, what you've been seeing this whole time is my text at 125% zoom. So you have three different sizes, small, medium, large, and you do have to log off and log back on, but it'll make all the text bigger on the screen. So if you, if you are someone or if you know someone who needs that kind of uh, larger text, that is how you do it. Another thing I want to show you is, uh, you know, Windows 7 comes pre-installed with Internet Explorer. Now, by my opinion, I am not a fan of Internet Explorer. I like some other browsers better, like Google Chrome and Safari. So, what I want to show you is how to swap out Internet Explorer for something like Google Chrome. And the way you do it is we're going to go to the Start menu once again. And if you look down here, there's a thing here called Default Programs. And we're just going to click on that. 
Click on this very top option here, set your default programs. And as you can see right here, I have Google Chrome and Internet Explorer next to each other. So if I click on Chrome, you can see here that it is currently not the default uh, browser. And all I have to do is click right here. And voila, it is now the default. And if you decide to do that, one of the things you're probably going to want to do, just to review, is you're going to want to pin it to your taskbar. And to do that, we're going to go back to the Windows button, put our cursor over Google Chrome, and right click, and hit pin to taskbar. And now we can drag it and drop it back over here, right click on Internet Explorer, and hit unpin. So we didn't uninstall it. We're just removing it as a shortcut. Now, the next thing I want to go over, and then we're going to be pretty much done, um, is I want to talk a little bit about antivirus software and anti-malware software. And the first thing I need to do is tell you a little bit about how all of these different things work, because there's a lot of bad information out there. Windows itself has some very large security holes in it and it doesn't appear that Microsoft is going to do anything to fix it because frankly if you look at money wise who financially benefits when you get a virus now this is part of the reason why I myself uh, went to Mac in the first place back when I was 16 and got six viruses on my dad's computer sorry dad and I was just tired of dealing with it one thing you do need to know about antivirus software is it does slow down your computer now, different ones will do it more dramatically than others. Um, and there's two applications that we strongly recommend that if you decide you're going to stick with Windows, okay, which is fine, these are the two best ones to go with. And one of them is free, and the other one is, I believe, $29. The first one you can get by simply Googling, it is called, I'm sorry, Microsoft Security Essentials. It is free, it is put out by Microsoft, and you just simply click right here, and click the version of your computer, so Vista or 7, 32-bit or 64-bit, and click download. Now, I already have it here on this computer. Go into all programs. Here it is. So it's very simple, it's very clean, it'll automatically search for updates, which like I said, that all of these things do slow down your computer. And uh, you can do a quick scan, a full scan, or a custom scan. But between that and the other application that I'm about to show you, uh, they'll really do a good job at protecting your computer. That being said, you do need to know that there is no such thing as perfect antivirus software. For example, there is one virus right now. You know, we have two locations. We have one in Key West and one in Cape Cod. And we're hearing from tons of our Windows friends who have all gone through this virus and it's destroyed all of their data. And it's a screen that comes up and it looks like it says FBI and it says something to the extent of pay us $3,000 and we'll remove the virus from your computer. And it's just horrible. So the other application, uh, which is a good investment, like I said, it is about $29, is called Malware Bytes. And let's open it up right here. You can see it's the first time I'm running it on this computer. Again, it's very easy to use, um, and you can have it run in the background. Let's just double check that price. I believe it is $29, but I could be wrong. $24, $24.95. So, that is the other application that I would recommend getting. Um, if you're buying a new PC these days, um, let me give you a couple quick things to look for. Um, first of all, you should know that we are adding, and by the time most of you see this, it'll already be in existence, a store page to PCClassesOnline.com. And the reason why we're doing it is we're not selling anything, but what we're doing is we're doing the research for you. We're picking out all the best computers with the best features and putting them all in one place for all of you to go. And we will find the best place online where you can get it. So, for example, there might be one that you're going to get cheaper at Amazon, another you'll get cheaper at something like B&H. But we will do all of that research for you. And once again, you can go to 
PC classes online and just simply click on the store button. But the key things you're going to want these days if you go with uh, a PC is you want really no less than 8 gigabytes of RAM. And RAM and memory are the same thing. I have a, a lot of metaphors that I use to explain these things so let me just put it out there for you right now. Think of your computer as a kitchen, okay? Your cabinets where you store all of your stuff is your hard drive, okay? These days, we typically recommend going with no less than a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Some people can get away with a 320 gigabyte hard drive, but for the most part, everyone needs around 500. That seems to be a good number. Now, your countertops. Let's say you're going to be baking a cake and you don't want to have to put one ingredient out and then add it and then put it back and then get the next ingredient because that's going to take forever, right? You want to be able to have access to all of your ingredients right there on your countertops. Well, your countertops are your RAM, also known as memory. And uh, that's where we, I just said, 8 gigabytes is pretty much the minimum that we would recommend these days. There's a lot of Windows computers coming out with touch screens and they don't really, in my opinion, they don't work that well. I'd still recommend a very traditional computer um, that has a, a mouse or a trackpad. And uh, that's about it. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I hope you'll share it with your friends. If you haven't yet signed up for PC Classes Online, we try really hard to put out as much good information for all of you. And while this right now, what you're seeing is not live, we do live classes almost every single day. And what's great is that at the end of the class, for example, right now is the point where we would be able to go out to the whole audience, all of you out there, and if you have a question, you would see an icon on your screen right now where you would be able to click. And I, myself or one of the other teachers here would be able to unlock your computer's microphone and you can simply speak your question to the teacher and the rest of the class, just like you were at an actual classroom but in the privacy of your own home. Our service is $199 a year, and I hope you'll give us a chance. My name is David Acox, and you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.